Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and Spider Force, issue number three of three. I didn't like this one that much. That being said, let's talk about who made this comic book and we'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, Priest is the writer, Marcelo Ferreira and Ibrahim Robertson is on pencils. Uh, Roberto Poggi, Ibrahim Robertson, and Craig Young on inks. Guru EFX, FX, however you want to pronounce it, on colors. VCs Joe Sabino on letters. And uh, cover artists, Shane Davis, Michelle Delecki, and Moray Holloway. Uh, Moray Hollowell, sorry. And uh, yeah, cool. Uh, Steve Ditko, Stan Lee created Spider-Man. This was yeah, this typical weird story all over the place kind of thing. Jameson's like, oh, I'm going to be the man. And all of a sudden he gets eaten. <laughs> and it didn't even look like he was eaten. Like, it looks like he got some some of his life force sucked out. But people have survived uh, having some of that happen. Uh, here, it's just like, oh, it happened. But he looked like he was just like, ow, that hurts. You know, you know. Uh, now I'm going to punch you in the face. But no, he's actually dead. And I can only tell because I didn't see him anymore in the book. Yeah. Uh, Puma was in this. That was cool. You know, they just wanted a bunch of Sinister Six types to fight the guys. It was really, like, pointless. It was just like, you know, surprise! I'm just going to throw this in there because i got to do some fillers in the book. Uh, but it didn't work at all. Why? Because, uh, what's his name? Puma was there. Um, wouldn't Puma be the epitome of a totem? you got to remember... The inheritors aren't just there for spider totems. You know, there just happens to be more spider totems than anybody else. But he went, they went after the Black Panthers because they're panther totems. Went after Man-Ape. Ate him because he's an ape totem. They go after all of the animal totems. All of them. So there's Puma. They're not... Verna isn't going to leave a perfectly good totem right there and and puma if you think about it go and check out puma explained in a minute on comic book university puma is a particularly powerful totem like bring it you know what i'm saying that will feed you and she's just gonna leave them no no that is a zero sense culpability to the story right there this is this is going to sound really mean, and I don't know how much Priest knows about all of these characters, Puma particularly, but my personal perspective on this, all right, from my knowledge, my my background with the comic books, you know what I'm saying, my understanding of these characters, that particular character is no. <laughs> like, it, almost as simple as that, no. This feels like Someone who is writing about these characters like, oh, I've always wanted to write about Puma, even though I don't really know anything about the character, apparently. Or I'm just not thinking critically about this particular character. I have to remind myself, it's just a comic book. But at the same time, it's the reason why I'm reading these. I read comic books because I want to read comic books. So it's not, it's just a comic book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like this particular instance was not thought out at all. It it ran completely 100% contradictory to everything that these inheritors were made to be. It wrecked the entire story, in my opinion. Um, it, the whole thing was just a really dark, we've got no chance... We got to trust uh, Kane, but we can't trust Kane, but we're stuck trusting Kane, but I still don't trust Kane, and I refuse to trust Kane. I ain't trusting Kane. All right, Kane, I kind of trust you, but, you know, in a non-trusting way. Oh, my God, Jesus, enough of that. Enough of that. This was not a good trilogy. All right, Spider-Girls, really good. Uh, Spider-Gwen, at the very end, that, that last issue of, that, of Ghost Spider, that was amazing. You know what I'm saying? I would love to see both of those continue. I want to forget that this ever happened. I want to act like this story, this this trilogy, never, ever occurred. This is, like, a great right. I, I, dude, Cr Priest is an amazing writer. Argue with me. You'll lose, you know? But this is one of those situations where it's like we've got a great writer who's writing about characters who it seems like he doesn't know who they are. And that's a funny thing to me 
considering the way that some comic skaters have talked about him because he seems to agree with some of the things that they say. We'll, we'll latch on to anything to prove our points, right? But to me, this, this reminds me of, of a kind of thing where it's like, what if Mark Twain were to write comic books? Hey, man, if Mark Twain were to stop and just read comic books for the next five years or so and, like, really get into these characters and understand all these characters, I would say let Mike Twain, or my, or Mark Twain write whatever the hell he wants. But the first comic book that Mark Twain writes, if he just learned about comic books, I shouldn't, this is actually a real insult. I'm not going to say it like that. But like if, uh, that, that's, a, yeah, that's actually a bridge too far. That's actually downright demeaning. And I don't mean to, to talk about Christopher Priest like this. But for Christ's sake, like if you've got these characters who you've never written before, never talked about writing before, never thought about writing before, you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to throw these characters in there. But you clearly don't know anything about these characters. And it's, it, to me, it's like it's a common sense sort of thing. Puma, animal, inheritors, eat totems, eat animal totems. Hmm, maybe I should investigate this further. Wow, the, to the, 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 the totem within the Puma is so powerful that he was actually destined to destroy the Beyonder? Think about that, the Beyonder from The Secret Wars, all right? Uh, Doom kind of hurt him. But the, the, the puma was supposed to destroy, eradicate the Beyonder on Earth. That's how powerful he could potentially be. We're talking cosmic levels right there. Hey, eating a cosmic Spider-Man really bumped up the inheritors, right? This is technically more powerful. Not even technically. This is more powerful than that. So so why was this character just like, oh, it was just in case for an emergency or something? Shut up. Just stop. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses for a horribly executed story. This was terrible. Because, and again, so when did Spider-Woman get her, her resistance to radiation back? When did she get that? Because she lost that. I believe it was a Marvel 2-in-1. She had to help out um, Black Goliath, who, like, what do you call it? He, he was dying. His body, his molecules were falling apart because of the serum. And uh, she, she had to help his body out because he wound up getting uh, irradiated in a really bad way. Like, he was dying. So she gave up her radiation abilities in a blood transfusion in order to help him. How, how did she, he get those back? Look, that could be me. Maybe this happened in a comic book at some point. Oh, hey, no, in this issue, Professor, go back and check this out. She got the power back. Okay, cool. That's that's just me. That's wrong. You know what I'm saying? I was wrong. But there was just so much. Why wouldn't... If she got the powers back and it wasn't just like, oh, because to me, it feels like it's just coincidence. Oh, Christopher Priest is like, oh, I remember this character from back in the day. She was immune to radiation, right? Ha, I'm going to put that in there. She lost her radiation abilities. She did? Oh, crap. I didn't know she lost her radiation abilities. I didn't read those comics and I never bothered to freaking ask anybody. But if she did get the, the powers back and he knew that she got the, that she lost and got those powers back, why wouldn't there just be a little reference in there? Hey, for all you numb nuts like Professor Bill who think that, you know, she doesn't have her powers anymore, go check out this comic. This is where you go back to the idea of Marvel Comics puts in those stupid little, hey, go and check this issue for more on this story. It sells more comic books. It sells trade paperbacks. It, it helps local comic book stores. It helps digital sales. It'll freaking help comic books. No. I'm done. I, I could talk about how much I'm, like, angry. Just how much I, I dislike how this story was executed from beginning to end. So much potential here, man. There really was a great sense of dread. Like, these characters, man, they're screwed. They're screwed. But, like, you... Kane is an absolute a-hole in this. I wanted Kane to be beheaded and then eviscerated in this. Love Kane. Love Kane. Not this Kane. I hated this Kane. Dude, mother with a baby, and you just gonna like let her stand there and make her think that she's screwed at this point. What the hell kind of a monster does something like that? No. No, no. I could talk about this forever, how how angry this comic book made me. 
This, again, this feels like someone who doesn't know anything about these characters. And I know that's not really the case. So why does it feel that way? I'm done. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.